Hi, I'm Johnny Engineer Termel, and today, Easter 2009, as we think about Jesus Christ who took that big sacrifice and beating up the bankers in the temple, and three days later, the King of the Jews was on a cross with a Roman inscription, condemned to death, Blow, I believe he did survive it and escape, a real coup against the Roman Empire. That's another story, hard to prove, but more likely than the stories we get about a resurrection to explain why he was seen alive. So anyway, on this date, we're going to talk about Jesus' most often cited words, which are repeated seven times in the scriptures. And amazingly enough, they are the differential equation for interest rates what he perceived to be the problem afflicting civilization then, and I agree, afflicts our civilization now. So, Easter Sunday for Jesus, his seven times quoted message got through. Christ's seven time quoted definition for usury, interest on money. In Matthew 13.10, the disciples came to him and asked, from the New International Version of the Bible, why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they they do not hear or understand. In Luke 8.10, he repeats, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God have been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that, though seeing, they may not see, though hearing, they may not understand. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what he thinks he has, will be taken from him. Now this reason he speaks to them in riddles, so only those who have the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God's heaven and hell will understand that this is a differential equation. I found it repeated seven times in scripture. Again in the parable of the talents, Matthew twenty-five twenty-nine: For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken from him. Again in the parable of the minas, Luke 19, 26, I tell you that to everyone who has will be given more, but as for the one who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. Again, in Thomas 91 of the Nag Hammadi Scrolls, just discovered in 1948 in the desert, whoever has something in hand will receive more, and whoever has nothing will be tried, deprived of even the little he has. And finally, in the Apocalypse of Peter, 7, 3, chapter 83, uh, verse 27 of the Nag Hammadi Scrolls. Everyone who has, it will be given to him, and he will have plenty. But he who does not have, it will be taken from him and be added to the one who has. So, an input, a deposit, or a borrowing, balance to a control system with a Laplace transform of 1 over S minus I, where I is the interest, for a differential equation, dB over dt is equal to IB, so the rate of bank balance change over the rate of time change is interest times the balance, where B is the balance, of course, has an output where everyone who has will become more positive, and everyone who has not will become more negative, like a bank account. Now, I had not used the Nag Hammadi verses in my poem bank.htm at my website, johnturnell.com, but I've just added it. So here's some of the poetry on these verses. Jesus' most cited verses, which are the differential equation for usury. In Matthew chapter 13, 10, it tells where he was asked, Why did he speak in parables? So meanings they were masked. The reason for disguise of message, note the words he said, it all comes down to interest. The theme affects the head. To those who have abundance will be given even more from those without abundance will be taken from their store. This mathematical equation states the function best. This biblical description of the function interest. To those with spare, the positives, they'll get some extra perks. And those with none, they'll have to pay. That's how the system works. 
The rich get richer, poor get poorer. It's not brotherhood. It's obvious that interest is reverse Robin Hood. This rule of more abundance was repeated down the line in Matthew 13, 12 and 25, verse 29, in Luke 19, verse 26, with 8, 18 as well, in Mark 4, 25, five times Christ used these words for hell. The new stuff. In Thomas 41, from Nag Hammadi Scrolls, a new Apocalypse of Peter, 83, 272. So, what to do with an abundance of spare seeds? Well, that goes on. So, Paul to the Corinthians 2, chapter 8, 14, we find abundance matched to need with charity foreseen. Quote, your own abundance now should be supplying for their need, that their abundance later will supply you your own seed. And in this way, who gathers much will not have overfill, and he who gathers little will be taken care of still. And in this way, there soon will be a rich equality where people help each other with great productivity. Finally, omitted from the Bible, but in Gnostic text is found, the greatest of all Christian laws for economics sound. St. Thomas in verse 95, where Jesus said it best, If you have money, do not lend it out at interest, but rather give it to one from whom you won't get it back. Thus helping out the poorest saves us from financial lack. So Jesus Christ came to the planet to fight debts, not sins. The Our Father originally said, Give us the, today tomorrow's bread and forgive us all our debts as we forgive our debtors. And they corrupted it into give us today today's bread and forgive us our sins. Jesus didn't say forgive us our sins. Ezekiel said God told them if we do change our path and do right, all our sins will be forgotten. So Jesus wouldn't have said, ask for forgiveness of sins when it's been promised. Jesus asked for forgiveness of debts. He said, when you're not chasing anybody for debts and no one's chasing you for debts and you got tomorrow's bread, call that heaven. Well, on Easter 2009, the day in honor when Jesus probably escaped Roman justice and survived the crucifixion, I would bet, because I believe he was really seen alive later, I honor him and his message, and it's been received. The most often quoted words in from Jesus in the sacred texts are the differential equation for interest. The flaw that's afflicting all of our civilization and the eradication and abolition of which Jesus prognosticated, said we should do. That was his prescription. Thank you, Jesus. Glad to think of you. Easter 2009.